I've been to places where there's police officers making less than $15 an hour, and they are so happy to be where they are because they found their true north. If you don't know your true north, you're never going to be happy because you're always going to be searching for that next acorn. <laughs> Someone who feels the call to become a police officer, would you tell them to answer the call? 100% yes. Uh, but I would also tell them to be very cautious as to fitting like minds with like spirits with like cultures. Uh, I think one of the biggest problems that we're having is when people are made up of certain predispositions, backgrounds and the like, and then certain goals but they go toward the opposite direction for the sake of the profession as a whole, I find it to be problematic. You know, there's di diversity comes in, in all good things. And, you know, depending on where you're at in the country and then the type of demographic as far as urban, suburban, rural, really could could either be a blessing or a curse so i wouldn't say just for the sake of the profession i would say fit it to the personality mode dang wow all right well that's definitely something for people to think about i am guilty of complaining and be, being disgruntled at times you know, myself you know. <laughs> yeah i'm just going to say these phrases and i would like for you to give sure. your feedback for each one uh, sure. so the first one is my administration is out to get me. Well, again, that goes back to the original dichotomy and the debate decade after decade, right? Leadership versus management. And I think when we manage, we give that false perception that it is about bean counting and it is about nothing but transactional behavior. So it's not that they're out to get, but their behaviors and their management style okay, is everything but conducive to a wellness environment. I've said it 50 million times and I'll continue to say it. Please. Don't worry about what's happening outside the four walls. If you invest your energy and good energy, what's happening inside the four walls, you'll see a compounded you know, return on investment on the streets out there. We talk about improving relationships all the time. There you go. You got to start within the four walls. Absolutely. Well, what if someone says when they start roll call, let's see what bull crap waits us for this shift. So again, right, uh, I, I always show a funny slide in my presentation where, uh, and it dates me, but remember that hair uh, commercial where the guy shows I'm not only the president, I was the client as well, and he's bald underneath his hair. So I say, if we were to act like that, that, you know, just because we ascend up the ranks or designations, but when we were sitting in those roll call chairs, what would we have perceived this, that this directive, this new legislation, this new policy? So I think that, you know, Maybe it looks like it's bull crap or the message is bull crap, but what about if we, you know, actually started with our golden circle and we started with the why? Hey, where did this come from? You know, and I think we do the opposite. We go from the outside in and sometimes we don't ever land on the on, the, on what's happening on the core of the message because of time and, you know, everything and, and logistics. So, yeah, it does. If you were to explain it in a certain way, no matter what we do, sounds like bullcrap. I mean, Miranda sounds like bullcrap if you think about it, right? If you just read yeah. the words of it, sounds like who would ever talk to us? Right. So um, I think that it's all in the delivery of the message. Two more phrases that I kind of heard a lot throughout the career, particularly those who were in it for the long haul. You know, mm -hmm. they, they would speak like they were in a prison sentence. I have I have 10 years left. I have 15 years left. I have 20 years left. Heck, I even saw of an officer who had just made the five year mark and said five down 25 to go <laughs> how could we reframe the mental mindset of, or, or just reframe that language because that's not healthy to look at it that way all right so i'll make you laugh and now i feel like you've been spying on my presentation um it's another slide that now it's another slide that i show and i stole this from a friend a dear friend who told me there's two people in the world that count time backwards it's cops and convicts you know and that's <laughs> and think about it so and, and why is that well again why wouldn't they and the reason why i say that is what do we do OK, as far as training and development, and I, I hate to use even the T word because training is for dogs, development's for people. That's the way I look at it. What are we doing to develop people to show the things to look forward to? So what I always say is maybe instead of, you know, worrying about your next vacation or the next year down, how about setting up a life that you don't want to escape from? And part of that life would be 
the career, the work-life balance and showing all the things that come along with it. Just one more phrase for you. Yes. I've been guilty of saying this too. I'll be happier when they raise my pay. I'll be happier when I get new equipment. I'll be happier when this happens, that happens. What do you have to say yep. to that? The grass is greener. Um, I've, I've studied it. Um, I found it to be so I could prove it intangible um, benefits. I could prove it intangible proof, intangible evidence that that does not ever, ever work out to be the case. I use myself as an example, and I openly admit this. Um, when I transferred to the department I work at now, I was still in the steps, the incremental steps for patrolmen. Nobody knew me. I don't say this because I was smart. I was in the right place at the right time, knew how to take a test. I ended up uh, coming out number one for the sergeant's exam. They didn't know what to do with me because I was looking at uh, over $40,000 raise overnight. Anyone in their right mind would say, that's life changing. What if I told you I didn't even make it a month, not even a month before I was complaining again? Yeah. What I say all the time is you can't pay your bills with sunshine and rainbows. I understand that. And I know the benefits behind certain things. I get it. All I would say is get out of your little comfort zone and you'll find your own answer to that. What do I mean? I've been to places where there's police officers making less than $15 an hour and they are so happy to be where they are because they found their true north. If you don't know your true north, you're never going to be happy because you're always going to be searching for that next acorn. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Going forward for any police officer watching this, what's your last bit of advice to encourage them and to lead them or give them something to think about? I, I guess to go back to what their foundation was, and if it means rebuilding their foundation, then go ahead, so be it. We always focused on the finished product, right? And that pretty right. house that comes at the end of the project. But if it's built upon stilt, it's going to crumble at the first sign of any type of turbulent winds, right? So I always sit, go back to the foundation. And what was the foundation of why you did what you did? Why is the foundation of people that sign up to join the military despite what we experienced? It's that selfless part of you. Why is it that, you know, you hold the door for somebody? That's not because you're wearing a uniform. It's what makes us up of who we are. So I always say, if you have the ability to really influence somebody, and that's what we do, what I'm saying is everybody has their niche and we have this unique ability to never have two days be the same. But then I would say also to be selfish as to what does your ideal day look like and then go out and get that. There's no reason. Don't be scared of trying something that's taboo and making moves, because I guess the worst thing in the world would be to have regret. And I think if you pack up too soon, that's what you're going to be left with where you still feel that fire in your stomach. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. You've written a book, Kapakazi. Where can someone get a hold of it? Uh, so it's on Amazon. It's available there uh, for the easiest platform. And uh, actually, I, I did the Audible version as well. That was cumbersome to say the least, but it's uh, it's done. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm a handheld guy. I like to have, you know, I like to do that. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm blessed to, you know, I work in a good environment. Uh, we, all, we have our problems like everywhere else, but, you right. know, I have the support, you know, of the community of, you know, uh, of the, the other officers that I work alongside. So I'm blessed in that way, but I truly want to leave my, I don't, I don't say a thumbprint, I say a soul print. So if I could do anything to help anybody just like you, that's why and this is all my pleasure to be with you. Um, that's that's what I want to do. I, I firmly believe in paying it forward. So the only thing I ever ask anybody to do is go ahead and share that positive message moving forward. That's all. Outstanding. Well, thanks again, Tom.